happens if you're too high risk for hormones? You've been evaluated by your physician carefully for your risk of heart attack, stroke, cancer, clot, right? Because those are the possible risks later. And you're found to be too high. You're 53 years old, you've got high blood pressure, you've got, your doctor tells you you've got blocked arteries, or you've had a clot in your leg before when you were pregnant, too high risk. Or you've got factor 5 laden or something esoteric. So now you want to know, is there an alternative? So, there was a presentation at the conference, uh, actually there were three presentations on what's called MS FLASH, MS FLASH, and it's an acronym for something. And they looked at alternate treatments, non-hormonal treatment for hot flushes. Now, yoga and exercise were studied, helped the mood, helped the energy, did not help hot flushes, unfortunately. So do the yoga, do the exercise, it's good for you, but it's not going to help. Low-dose peroxetine helped. Anyone heard of peroxetine? Other name for peroxetine is? Paxil, exactly. Good for depression, but tends to make you fat and tired. Unfortunately. Yay. <laughs> no. So it's not really what we call a first line treatment for depression. So it's a fan? It's a yeah, it's a Prozac <laughs> It's in the Prozac serotonin family. Good for panic. Good for panic. But in 20, 30, 40, 50 milligram dose, 7.5 milligrams, low dose, helped hot flashes, did not take away libido and orgasm in women, and did not cause weight gain. There's hope. And there were a few other things that were presented, like venaflaxine and a few others, and estrovera, which is a herbal product. There are a few others. Everybody says, well, what about black cohosh? What about, um, uh, I mean, we've all heard of remedies, right? Tons of them. Evening primrose oil. Bottom line is, they don't work well enough. They work, they reduce hot flashes by 30%. But guess what? So does placebo reduce hot flashes by 30%. You've got to do better than placebo to be called effective. You've got to do 50% to be effective. So paroxetine, venaflaxine, and estrovera, yes, they do it by more than 50%. So now what about brain fog? You know when you're out of order, and I'm sorry, this doesn't stop in perimenopause. You hit it in your 40s, it goes into your 50s, and it doesn't really get better. Unfortunately. So what is it? Foggy thinking, action, uh, blue, anxious, blue, moody, can't figure things out, bad memories, it's like a fog. You can treat it with estrogen. So they show there's a link between low estrogen and poor, poor mental functioning. So not only hot flushes affecting your sleep and making you crabby in the day, but actually the low estrogen itself. Now, last but not least, hormone therapy you would think will prevent dementia. The Women's Health Initiative said, not so much. But now they reanalyzed the data. If you do hormone therapy in the first five years of menopause, early, you can prevent further dementia later on. But if you wait until you're older and you try five years of hormone therapy, it doesn't work. There's a window of opportunity where your brain is dying. And you've got to get in there with the estrogen if you really want to, if you are okay with doing the estrogen therapy. So, bottom line is, choose a menopause doctor carefully. Make sure that the menopause doctor studies it, get certified in North America. NAMS is a NAMS certified practitioner, uh, menopause practitioner. Spend time, use safe and lowest dose possible, the most effective, evaluate your risk versus benefit, offers individualized care, and augments your family doctor because you need your family doctor, you need your gynecologist, you need your endocrinologist, and you may even need your naturopath. But if you go to a menopause doctor, that doctor must work with them and bring them alongside to help them.